200 years ago, Asiatic lions ranged freely across many parts of Asia from Turkey to Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq and in India. Kings loved hunting lions and early on hunting would only be with spears and bows and arrows. But once man found how to use his firearms and guns, the lions began to die even faster at the hands of their hunters. Lions in Iran, Iraq, Turkey and Saudi Arabia had all perished more than a hundred years ago. And we're talking about the Asiatic lions here. As we record this podcast in 2023, Asiatic lions can be found in only one country in the world today. And that is in India. How did this come to be? This is an episode in a series of podcasts about wildlife conservation and the stories behind how many wonderful wild creatures thrive in the forests of India. Hi, you're listening to What's New Today, a kids and family podcast about current events shaping our world. This is your host Sangeeta and in every episode I'm joined by a very curious child who would like to research and explore the topic that we're about to speak about. And in this episode, I am joined by... My name is Chandrika Karabi. I study in Sishugriha School, Bangalore. I'm nine and a half years old and I study in fourth grade. Biology is my favorite subject, even though it's not there in fourth grade. (laughs) I was just going (laughs) to ask you because I thought the division between physics and chemistry and biology, they all start much later, right? Yes. Welcome, Chandrika. Uh, It's amazing to see that you already heard these words like biology. Um, But what about lions? Do you like lions? Oh, I love lions. Oh, have you had a chance to see a lion? Yeah, many times. When I, uh, whenever I go to a zoo, I see one. Ah, okay. I was just going to say not on YouTube. Okay, but in, in person, you've seen it in a zoo. Have you yes. had a chance to be, visit any wildlife yeah. park? Yeah, I've gone to Banagata and I've seen two to three lions there. It's kind of like a zoo, but uh, there's also one place where we can see many other animals which live in the wild. Now, what do you find most fascinating about lions? I love that lions are majestic and I love the lionesses. They always are so fierce. They always go out for hunting in a team. Only the fathers take care of the babies. Yeah, most of the time they look after the babies and... uh, the father will make sure that they won't get lost or something. Okay. Is that something very similar to what happens in amongst humans? Yeah, kind of. Uh, if the fathers are very careful, take care yes. of the babies, the mothers go out finding food amongst humans also? Yeah, sometimes. I'm very happy to hear that, in your opinion, the fathers are also the kind that take care of babies and nurture their children. Yes. Great, great. I'm happy. Now, you mentioned you, you've seen a lion at the Banar Ghatta. I don't know if I should call it a national park or a zoo. Yeah. Uh, but do you know that lions in India, the Asiatic lions, can be yes. found in only one state? Which state is that? Gujarat, in Gir National Park. In the Gir Sanctuary, right? Gir is one of the five sanctuaries in Gujarat, which houses Asiatic lions. Yes. You remember at the beginning of this episode, I mentioned that a lot of kings have hunted lions in many regions in the world. Yes. What do you think about the kings in India? Do you think they too hunted a lot of lions? And Yeah, they must have hunted a lot of lions. And the puggies that we have now, lion mm. trackers, they used to help the kings and queens find these lions. But now they have taken a pledge to save these Asiatic lions. Wonderful. You used a very interesting word called puggy. We are going to come back to that word a little later. But before that, I've got a very interesting story for you. Okay. In this story, we've got a king who is the person to whom a lot of the credit for saving the Asiatic lion goes to. Would you be surprised? A king takes credit. Oh my God. 
so just like you know i was telling you about how lions have perished uh, uh, in many parts of asia in india too the asiatic wild lions had really come down in number there is uh, there was a princely state in india which was called the junagadh state india before independence right there were large parts of the country which were directly ruled by the british there were also tiny little parts which what controlled by the kings or the royalty so these were called princely states so in those states the kings had some authority or control over what was happening to the people in their country what was happening to the forests and the wildlife the junagadh state in gujarat was one such state and the king at the time of indian independence his name was mahabbat khan mohammad mahabbat khan if i remember correctly he was very fond of dogs he had more than 2000 dogs can you believe it oh yeah i never knew somebody can have 2000 dogs i've seen people are having two or three dogs but 2000 that's too much but we all live in tiny little apartment complexes he had a palace yes maybe no It's he okay. would probably be having one room for each dog or something <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> very possible because he used to throw lavish parties for his dogs celebrating their <laughs> birthdays you know marriage between dogs he used to throw huge parties for the people in the public so he loved his dogs he loved many animals he also loved the lions in his forest so the gir sanctuary that we talk about today right was part yes. of the junagadh state then so these kings were very fiercely controlling about who can hunt which creatures in their forests nobody could hunt even a single creature without the permission of the king oh my god yeah it was very tightly controlled you remember you used to word called pagi those yes. pagis every single morning when the king would wake up he'd have his breakfast and then apparently he would go for a walk around his garden the pagis would come and first tell him about everything that's happened in the forest during the previous day and night which who killed what i have the prides been well fed is there any disease all of these updates have to come to the king every single morning when he takes his morning walk so it was not just the nawab of junagadh most kings in india then used to have a very good sense of how many tigers lions elephants whatever you know all the creatures that were there in the forest they had a very good sense of the numbers so if a king had a forest and if somebody wanted to kill a tiger or a lion or a rhinoceros or whatever a black buck they would have to get the permission of the king so sometimes the royalty from the other pr- princely kingdoms they would come they would all go hunting together but even if they went hunting together it is only after the king has given permission so he would start by saying let's say there were three princes who have come to visit his kingdom he would give each prince say one black buck or or all four of them together could kill one tiger or some such number would be very clearly agreed upon so he would take care that unnecessarily these princes also don't kill any wildlife now the britishers were also very fond of hunting if a britisher came and asked i'd like to kill 10 tigers 10 lions the kings would usually agree but the nawab of junagadh was very 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 strict right from 1900 till 1947 he kept a very careful watch over the lions at one point in his kingdom there were as few as 15 to 30 asiatic wild lions so many of the britishers would come and ask him sir please i'd like to you know go and hunt and kill one lion or five lions or something like that he simply turned around and said not a single lion in my forest can be touched and he was very strict about it right till 1947 he did not even permit the british to hunt for lions in his wow. in his uh, forest yeah you know after india got independence the nawab of junagadh he went to pakistan 
he did not join the indian union so you could choose between being a part of india or being a part of pakistan when he was taking his flight and finally flying off to karachi apparently uh, when his flight was circling the forests of gir because he was leaving his kingdom and going away yes as his flight was circling the forests of gir he had tears coming out of his eyes i believe saying who is going to take care of my lions wow this is such a moving story oh i'm so happy finally yeah. these asiatic lions have made a comeback yeah you know they've made such a fen- phenomenal comeback that the forest area is insufficient so sometimes you can find photographs of these lions wandering off into the beaches <laughs> <laughs> which brings me to a question do you think lions hurt humans what do you think Oh wait, let me ask our listeners to this question. If you happen to meet a lion while you're walking on a beach, would it attack you? What do you think? If you're listening to this on Spotify, you could just scroll right down below show notes and click reply to leave your answer. If you're listening to this on any other platform, please do share your thoughts either via email at hello@wsnt.in or you could write to me on Instagram. Uh, I've left the links to all of these in the show notes below. Chandrika and I continue to talk about this question where she shares the answer to this question. Do lions almost always attack humans? If you'd like to take a short break, you can come back and listen to the next episode in a bit or you could just continue listening to it right away to part 6 of the wildlife series. I'll see you there.